वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स एंड टुडे इज अ स्पेशल एडिशन ऑफ आवर ग्रुप डिस्कशन ऑन आवर ग्रुप फेसबुक ग्रुप व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एवरीथिंग यू शुड हैव लर्न इन स्कूल बट यू डिडंट एंड बिफोर वी स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन लेट मी इनवाइट आवर चीफ गेस्ट मिस्टर नेवल गोन गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रॉम द यूके गुड आफ्टरनून इफ यू आर इन इंडिया एंड गुड इवनिंग इफ यू आर इन इंडोनेशिया सो देयर वी गो वी कवर्ड द वर्ल्ड um apart from those in america actually that they're probably not even awake yet so um anyway how you doing ck i'm doing uh, very good in fact it's a weekend for us uh, like you said the americans they have not even woken up uh, for the weekend they are still sleeping but we are enjoying ourselves and the topic uh, today is budgeting because we announced it that we will be discussing how we can do budgeting so eager to learn from you nevel well you know all about budgeting ck i know you do um, but the interesting thing is the majority of people know about budgeting but they don't actually realize it and it's th- something that we did learn at school because we learned how to add up and we learned how to take away you learned how to add up and take away ck didn't you well uh you know to be very frank with you i hated the commercial maths and i never used to attempt it but you know you are right uh, i used to add up and i used to subtract but i in nutshell hated commercial math i loved the trigonometry and uh, calculus but even with geometry and calculus you still had to add up and take away so whether you call it um business math or or just simple math it doesn't make any difference to me it's just maths so let's let's test you here you go you have 100 rupees and you buy something for 20 rupees how much have you got left ask me something hard never it's too simple <laughs> <laughs> of course it's too simple but we need to you know we need to just basically understand that that is how simple it really is so Simple question. You have 100 rupees in your wallet and you're going to buy something for 20 rupees. How much have you got left after the purchase? 79.999 till infinity. Now, you're really taking the mickey here, okay? The point is you've got 80 rupees, okay? There's nothing difficult with that. Okay, but let me ask you now a more complicated question. You still have a hundred rupees. You haven't bought something yet, but it's going to cost you twenty percent of your hundred rupees to buy what I'm going to give you. Once you've bought it, how much have you got left? This is a tough question. So uh, let me repeat the question. You are saying that I'm going to buy something which is twenty uh, percent of what I have. so yep. i'll be left with the uh, 80 rupees i to repeat exactly the same answer i wasn't trying to trick you it's exactly the same answer and now you know about percentages and interestingly enough that's all you really need to know when it comes to business maths you need to know about how to add up and take away and how to understand percentages but it's percentages on the base so you had 100 rupees I asked you for 20% and that means you've only got 80 rupees left because 20% of 100 is 20. It gets a bit more complicated because if I would have said to you you've got 95 rupees and now you're going to give me 20% what would you have left because now you're getting into decimals. So it can get a little more complicated but the interesting thing is we do have a calculator that can help us even on my iphone there's a calculator if you haven't got a calculator to, to one hand and it's perfectly okay to use a calculator but it's a lot better actually if you can do these things in your head because once you start to do it you will realize how easy it is and taking 20% of 95 as opposed to taking 20% of 100 it's just a matter of keeping numbers in your head and you can do it lots of different ways you can take 20% of 100 then take 20% of 
which is the difference between 100 and 5, off that number. Because 20% of 5, you know what 20% of 5 is, don't you? Uh, let me think. Uh, is it? 20% of 5 is 1. Yes, yeah, a fifth. So you can do it lots of different ways. But again, you can use the calculator. And the whole purpose about this is, is learning how to do budgeting. So when you were at school, TK, and in the trailer to this, we went through some of this discussion. When you were a child and you were given pocket money or an allowance or um, money in return for doing chores at home, because that's how I earned some of my money, um, you were given approximately how much on a daily basis or a week? Well, I, uh, to be very frank with you, um, you know, um, in school, I never dreamt or even had an idea that I'll have to do mathematics because uh, I had made up my mind that I am going to become either a pilot, a fighter pilot, or if I fail uh, to become a fighter pilot for whatever reason, I'll become a scientist. So I never have to do any mathematics. And as the luck would have been, moment I landed into a, a job, I had to do sales. <laughs> That's all about calculating profitability, calculating exactly. margin. <laughs> and do you know what? Even as a pilot, you would have had to, or a scientist, you would have had to learn the same thing. So all these lovely things you see in the background, you still would have to learn quite a lot of mathematics. And certainly, as a scientist, you probably have to learn some pretty detailed mathematics. And pilots have to learn pretty good mathematics too. But most of theirs are in a practical arena. But the interesting thing here is once you've been given an amount of money at home, or, you know, during the day. That's an interesting pair of legs. That's mathematics. Were you joining us? If you joined us, it'd be great to see your face. At the moment, we're looking at a blank wall that you could fill up if you like, but it'd be really nice to see your face if you're joining us. Can you hear us? <laughs> anyway, CK, while this person decides to join us or not, um, you were given, you were, you know, your parents gave you an allowance. And let's just say, you know, you're quite old, so that allowance was probably, probably around about 100 rupees, I would imagine, um, which was a lot of money back in those times. Um, and you had to budget for your what you want to spend out of that allowance and for some of it you could spend the whole lot you know you could walk into a nice sweetie shop and you could spend the whole lot in which case you've now got sweets and you've got no money left so that's called spending it all up front <laughs> really quite simple um, and what it means is you've got to carry sweets around until next week in which case, then you get another allowance. But as I know, you are quite a smart an individual. So you might have thought, well, I'm going to have some sweets, but I'm not going to buy all the sweets at the beginning of the week. I'm going to buy sweets during the week. And equally, I'm going to save up because I would like to buy something else in three or four weeks' time. Um, and I know that I have to have at least 150 rupees, which is more than my one week's allowance, to go and buy that one thing that I really want. Does this sound reasonable? Is this the sort of thing you might have been thinking about when you were quite young? Yes, I think you're right. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I had to plan a little bit about my allowances in, that, in, in terms of uh, buying a bus pass, to go to the school and college and also spending in the cafeteria and also saving some for something that I needed to buy a gift for my mother, a gift for my father or my sister or spending money. So I think I had to do a little bit of planning uh, with my allowances. You are right. Absolutely. Yeah. So planning is brilliant. 
okay? The thing is, at school, we didn't learn how to plan. We just learn how to do sums. And don't look at the back of the books. That's where the answer is, and that would be cheating. So what we need to be doing is planning what we're going to be doing. And how would you have planned to do what you were doing? How would you have done that? Uh, Nebel, I think uh, uh, I would have definitely planned upfront, and uh, uh, you're right that uh, you know the teachers in the school were not teaching us how to do uh, planning uh, about budgeting, but definitely we were learning about uh, this aspect from the parents because they were doing budgeting, and I think there was a rub of effect where we were actually learning how to do budgeting, and that really helped us in planning. How to how much to spend in cafeteria? How much to save, and how much uh, to uh, you know save for uh, gifts, etc. So I think there was a little bit of planning. By the way, we have a guest here uh, in our uh, show, but I can't say his name. Hello. Okay. Well. Okay, well, we can, we can continue. So, um, so planning, the, the main thing about this is planning. So let's just take, take us through the steps of what you did. So your parents would have, would have had a budget. They would have taught you, you know, how to utilize a budget and how to work on a budget. So typically, I mean, what my parents did was they told me to write it down. So at the top of the page, I would have the money that I was get, got for my allowance. And on the left-hand side of the page, I would write down everything that I wanted to spend. And some of the things I could afford straight away and some of the things I had to save up. And by the end of the week, I needed to make sure I had money left so that I can actually buy those additional purchases further down the line. So if I wanted to mine was I wanted to buy a little scooter. I can remember that. It was just a two-wheel scooter, one with the handles, you know, nice and easy, and that's what I wanted to buy. I can't remember how much it cost, but it was certainly, um, it was certainly about eight weeks of my allowance money in total. But because I wanted to buy other things with my allowance money, like, as you said, bus pass, meals at school and other things like that, I had to save up to pay for the scooter. So the way I would do that is to write it down. There's nothing complicated. I mean, we see the blackboard in the background here, and we would just write it down. So you start off with your, let's say it's 100 rupees, and let's say that your long-term purchase is going to be 200 rupees, and you would like to buy it in 10 weeks. So how much would you have assigned each week to, to afford that 200 rupees in 10 weeks' time? Well, uh, Neville, I think uh, I approached uh, this problem in a different manner. Uh, what I did is basically assign the, uh, for my long-term purchase, assign the money first. Say, for example, if I have 500 rupees with me, I will assign 200 straight away and then uh, try to budget limit my expenses within that remaining amount and that way i didn't have to write anything that was my way of uh, you know doing school days <laughs> but even so you'd have to remember it you'd have to put it in a jar somewhere and so you could see it on a regular basis so again you know you don't have to write it down but it makes life a lot easier if you do write things down um, you could even these days you could put it in your iPhone, so and put it in, uh, in on your calendar as a permanent memory. But the simple fact of this is, you need to learn how to plan what's going to happen going forward, and that's called budgeting. There's nothing difficult with this. We can make it really complicated if you like, but your parents and you now as a parent, you have an income that comes in, you know, maybe it's weekly or monthly, but you've got regular outgoings. 
There's maybe a mortgage or the rent. Then there's food. Then there's family bits and pieces that you you put aside for entertainment, maybe to go to the theatre or go out to a restaurant. And each of these items you know that you're going to spend and you're going to have the budget to make sure that you can do them all. But equally, big items like a new car, you tend not to buy that out of your monthly income because new cars tend to be quite expensive. So it tends to be more than your monthly income. So you need to save and put it to one side. And we had a, I had a very simple way of doing this. We used to have piggy banks. When I was a little boy, we had piggy banks. Did you have a piggy bank? Of course, uh, we had a piggy bank. Uh, sometimes made of plastic, sometimes made of uh, clay, which you can break. And, you know, suddenly you're rich when you break that. <laughs> Well, I can only remember the, the plastic kind um, because I probably would have been breaking the, the 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 other pigs all the time. But we we had piggy. Well, we called them piggy banks. Sometimes they looked like a pig, but typically, um, I mean, my mother had a teapot actually that she used to put in little little extra bits of money that she'd saved during the week so that she could go and treat herself or treat someone else. Um, So she was doing her own budgeting within another budget, okay? So being very smart. So I used to have four piggy banks. How many piggy banks did you have? I used to have uh, many. Actually, every year I used to break one. And uh, once my uh, parents uh, got the plastic one or also metal one that lasted for a couple of years. So maybe uh, three, maybe two, I don't remember exactly, but two to three at least, which lasted for a couple of years. No, I was actually talking about a number of piggy banks that you had going at the same time. Almost like deposit accounts at the bank or bank accounts. So... One at a time, uh, uh, Neville. I, I never had uh, multiple piggy banks. One at a time. Okay. One for, well, me, I used one to for have... my sister. Okay. Well, I used to have four because I would put money in each one because the, each piggy bank had a particular reason. And the first piggy bank was I used to get my li- weekly allowance and I used to put the amount in there that I would know I was going to spend. So that could have been for my bus pass and, and lunch at school and maybe bits and pieces when I was traveling to and from school. And then I had a second piggy bank, which was for my nice purchases, but they tended to be quite big. So I would always put a percentage of my allowance into that piggy bank. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to spend it on, but I knew that If I had a big purchase, I would need to have money in that piggy bank. Otherwise, it would never be. And I used to put 10%. And this is where percentages come good, okay? Because typically, my allowance, it covered 100% of my daily costs, my bus pass and my food at school. And... That was about 70% of my allowance. So let's just say, for instance, let's say I had 10 pounds. Or let's say it's it's 1,000 rupees. Let's make it easy because majority of people listening would be Indians. So it's 1,000 rupees. And 70% of that I would put into that first piggy bank. So what's 70% of 1,000? That'll be 700 rupees. I'm getting you thinking again, you see. You have to think on your feet here. 70% of 1,000 is 700 rupees. So I would put 700 rupees into piggy bank number one. And then 10% I would put into piggy bank number two, which was 100 rupees. Uh, I have a question. 10% of the remaining amount or 10% of the total amount? No, 10% of the total amount. I always started with the total amount. It's a lot easier. So, the 1,000 rupees is 100%. 70% goes into piggy bank number one. 10% goes into piggy bank number two. 
And what percentage have I got left now? 20%. 20%, absolutely. And I've got two piggy banks left. So guess what I would put in each of those piggy banks? 10, 10. I did. I used to put 10 and 10. And 10 was for my comics. Because I used to love, you know, Superman comics, Batman comics. That was in my comics jar. And the other one, the other 10% was my treats. So if I fancied a Mars bar or a Kit Kat, I would take it out of the treats. And sometimes at the end of the week, so I could get to Wednesday, which is less than halfway through the week, and I would have, wouldn't have anything left in my treats jar. But I would still have my 10% in my comics jar and my 10% in my long-term jar. And sometimes I used to sneak some of that money out of each of those jars and put it into my treats jar and then treat myself. But I would never take it out of the 70%, which literally was my bus pass and my food, at, uh, my lunch at school. Because I knew that if I didn't have 70% in there, I wouldn't eat. You know, So again, this is just being smart. So by using four biggie, piggy banks, and these days you could use four bank accounts, you could put money into one and then transfer into the others. And there's nothing complicated with that, but each of them had a purpose. So you can see where I'm going here. I could rec recognize by just shaking my piggy bank just how much money I had in each, each piggy bank. So what and that's advice? the way I did my budgeting. So, uh, Neville, I think uh, I, I have a very fundamental question here. What is your advice to entrepreneurs? I think this is an example which is used, um, uh, the example that you have actually used of piggy bank is a, is a very basic example where uh, all of us can actually start planning, thinking. I think that is your objective. So in today's uh, world, entrepreneurs, have multiple expenses. So for all of these expenses, they need a separate account. What is the best practice? Or they can maintain, a, like you were starting off uh, when you said that, hey, did you write uh, your budget? Or have a separate account. What is the best practice? Open separate accounts? Well, the best practice is have a budget. That's number one. And stick to it. And recognizing that if you've got limited funds, you need to make your funds stretch to get the best value from your budget. So if you are opening a bank account, I mean, I, I can only advise um, very simply what happens in the UK, and you can perhaps tell me what happens in India. I mean, I can open a personal bank account here, and it doesn't cost me any money. Um, and I can open five, six, seven, eight bank accounts in my name, all attached to that one bank account, and I can transfer money from one to the other on an app. Simple as that. So, and it doesn't cost me any money. So if I wanted to open a business account, typically in the first year, the business account doesn't cost you, but after a while, um, a business account is something like six pounds a month. So for every single account, you would have six pounds a month going out. So that would be a bit silly to have lots of accounts there. So this is where you would have a spreadsheet outside of the bank account and you would clearly make that link to your budget. But the main thing here is to know how to budget. Every expense that an entrepreneur has from the amount that you pay for your phone to your broadband to your car expenses, your travel expenses, uh, telephone expenses if you've got those, uh, webinar costs if you're subscribing to a webinar package, um, your website, whether that's monthly, annually, or weekly sometimes, every single cost that needs to be ascribed to your business needs to be accounted for. And there's a simple reason for this is you need to know how much it's costing you to run a business. 
So there's nothing complicated here, CK, is there? I'm not. I'm not really saying there's rocket science here, am I? Uh, not at all. I think uh, uh, you know. But the whole thing is that many people don't do this uh, as a practice, and uh, sometimes uh, you know there are lump, lump sum claims. They put it on their company, and they don't write each and every expense like the way you are explaining. But I think it's a good practice to write each and every expense that you are making. Uh, and then uh, next year budgeting will be a lot easier, I think. Well, the thing is, once you start to do this, the easier it becomes. And what I would suggest is um, break your annual budget down into months. Um, you don't need to go into weeks, but do it into months. And then during the month, keep an eye on the budget. Sometimes you're going to be doing lots of travel. And that's absolutely necessary. Um, but it might be business travel that you would only do in certain times of the year or in certain months. Um, if you're going on a networking, you know, if you're a BNI member or whatever, you know that every single week you have to pay. And therefore, every single week you have to travel. And each of those is a cost. And the more important thing is there, then ultimately you can find out what it's costing you to run your business. Because a lot of people will say, oh, it doesn't cost me anything. You know, I've got a cheap website and I've got this and my phone's just a monthly fee, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the point is, if that's the way you're thinking and that's the way your behavior is going, what's that saying to your potential customer? And what it's actually saying is, I'm not in control of my costs because I don't actually value them. Therefore, if I don't value my costs, I don't value me. And when you start then to negotiate with your, um, with, with, with the person you're going to be selling your business to, whether that's a service or a product that you're selling, they're going to start to question, actually, do I want to do business with this person? They don't really value themselves or they're overvaluing themselves. And typically what I hear with entrepreneurs is they'll come up with this fictitious amount of 500 pounds a day. That's what they want to get paid. But they've got no handle on what it's actually costing them. And in these COVID times, it's probably not costing a great deal because you're working from home. But the interesting thing is that means that your electricity costs are going up. Your gas costs are going up. Your food costs are now part of your you know, daily eating bill, whereas where you would have been outside, you may have been paying by credit card for a coffee here and a, a sandwich there or lunch here or drinks over there or petrol or you know, gasoline or whatever, you, whatever you're going to do. But the point about this is you need to learn and start learning how to budget. And it's quite simple. Just put it on a spreadsheet. And as you start to identify, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed this, CK, but, but Excel's pretty good, isn't it? You, know? you, you, you make an item and you say phone, and then as you go down later on and you put another phone in, you start to type PH and all of a sudden phone comes up. So it's even told you, oh, you've had that before. And that's good because you're, you're being consistent. You're now being able to look at all of the phone costs and summarize all of those phone costs to one side and then find out what it's really costing you. Because when you start out as an entrepreneur, typically budgeting is just a paper exercise. You, 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 you don't really know what it's going to cost you. you know, and that's being honest. I mean, I don't, you know, when I start a business off, I've got a better idea because I've run lots of other businesses. But I really didn't know when I started my first business what it was going to cost me. And the types of expenses that I would be incurring. But after a while, you get into that consistent arena by allocating all of these titles on a simple spreadsheet. You can actually work out what it's really costing you. 
And then if you go down the driving range and you put golf on your spreadsheet and it comes up again, but actually that was for your benefit, not the business benefit, <laughs> then you can realize where you're t- not only where your money's going, but where your time's going to. So again, these are all simple things, but your budget is an integral part of your business. And it's really important to start it off in a good way, right at the very beginning. Get yourself into a daily routine. So at the end of every day, if you if you if you you actually say, well, here's all, here's all my expenses. Some days you won't have any expenses. You'll be sat at home and you'll be on webinars and just talking and it'll be your phone will be on a contract so that'll be once a month say um and everything else there won't be additional expenses but when you're out and about and you're traveling you know to and from networking meetings there will be expenses so just have a piggy bank <laughs> but you know take a little box with you and put all of your expenses into that box. And if you don't get a receipt, have a little notepad and just write down, you know, toll cost. You put the cost of the toll and you just put a little bit of paper and you put it into that little box. Create your own piggy bank in the car. And then at the end of the day, pull out all of those receipts and put them on your expense form so that you know exactly what it's costing you and exactly what it's budgeted, what your budget's cost you. And it's as simple as that. There's nothing difficult to it. But again, this is about discipline and it's about perseverance and it's about doing the right things at the right time. The worst thing is you can do all this and you literally put it on in a box and wait until the end of the year and then you start to write down all of these things and you've got like a thousand things in this box and it's a pain. Whereas if you'd have had a couple of things on a daily basis, you could have just put it straight into the spreadsheet, done very quickly, and then you know what your business is costing you on an ongoing basis. So again, this is about just being disciplined and knowing what's going to make an impact to you. I think this uh, makes sense. Uh, yes, absolutely, uh, Neville. In fact, uh, today we have a very nice tool called Spreadsheet, and it's free. It's there in all mobile phones and also in all the PCs. Uh, so people can actually start uh, getting into practice of, first of all, identifying what are their different uh, sections, uh, which is columns on the spreadsheet and putting these uh, expenses there and then starting uh, keeping records. I think that is most important. And, uh, you know, earlier, uh, you know, we never had uh, uh, things like spreadsheet. We had to note it down uh, on something uh, on a diary, which which was quite uh, quite a work. So right now it is as simple as that. Suppose you spend money, just put it there. Hey, spend $1 for coffee, $2 for Coke or things like that. So I think it's uh, most important to get into uh, the habit of recording it and uh, that will help us in um, you know making our budget so if suppose we start make writing it today after three months we will have very clear picture of the budget and that data yeah absolutely and that's a data that can be used right the way through and these days it's even easier so when you're first starting out it's obvious to use a spreadsheet because you don't need an accounting package but as you move further on the accounting packages really do help you. So, for instance, you know, the two m- most common that I, I, I'm aware of in the SME arena are QuickBooks and Xero. And both of them are apps. And it's so good because for every receipt you get, you know, so say you're in the car and you've just gone through the toll booth or you've got a coffee at McDonald's or something, <laughs> You've got a receipt and you literally just scan the receipt and it goes straight in and it says, where do you want it to go? And you put down coffee or you put down toll or you put down travel, whatever you want to put down because you've already set that up in your accounts. And it goes and allocates it there immediately. And once it's done that, it can reconcile to the bank account as well. 
if you've if you've put it through your bank account. So there there are some fantastic tools out there that are making your life easy. You don't have to use them at the very beginning. I would suggest is get yourself into a discipline which is a bit more manual to start with because that will then help you set it up and realize what's actually happening. So you can, by looking at your spreadsheet, you can have a ready reckoner of just exactly how much it's costing your business and whether you can afford to do things and, and ultimately you will get the average cost. What's your break-even cost? You can get really complicated with this and really sophisticated. You know, what is your break-even cost? Well, if you've got a decent spreadsheet system or a different decent accounting system, it will give you your break-even cost. And you might want to do that, a break-even cost per day. You know, and you might even say that's your fixed cost per day. I need to, every invoice, every contract I do, I now know that 10% is going to my fixed costs. Why is that? Because I know what my fixed costs are. I can see what they are. I've budgeted for them. And I now know I've got a ready reckoner up here of what's going on. And that then leaves loads of time for you to do the really important things about your business, and that's selling it, getting the income through the door. That's where the majority of your time should be spent, either in marketing, sales, or fundamentally invoicing to get the money through the door. So very simple lesson today. It's, it is everything you should have learned at school but didn't. The, more, the point about this is it was always there. Maths was telling you how to add up and take away and what percentages to do. You were actually working out your break-even cost, even though you didn't know it. And that's what wasn't taught you at school because you didn't think. There wasn't a thought of being an entrepreneur. It wasn't a thought of being a business person. It was all about the answers at the back of the book. Don't look because it's cheating. So hopefully that's helped a bit today. We'll have another insight next week on everything you should have learned at school but didn't. Um, and I know, CK, that you've learned this over the years and you're pretty good at budgeting. Having run sales teams around the world, you know what a budget is. Um, and therefore, it sets people like you in good stead. So this isn't all about, you know, a bit of uh, smoke up the chimney. This is reality. It's real life. And the other thing is, it will help you run your home so that you can afford to be in the nicest home you, possible. And it's as simple as that. Yes, uh, Neville, I think uh, thank you very much for giving this very simple message uh, to the uh, budding entrepreneurs to start maintaining a budget and to start maintaining data. I think we had few participants today, uh, but they were not uh, very keen to learn. But I'm sure in the group there are a lot of people who are keen to learn uh, what uh, Neville is teaching us. I will leave this uh, video recording so that people can... Uh, you know, watch the video and uh, pick up a few good things. And uh, if you have a question, please uh, do write in and we will take that question in the next episode of everything you should have learned at school, but you didn't. So catch you next time, uh, folks. And Neville, thank you so much for finding time and coming over. We will catch up in the next episode. My pleasure, CK. Take care, everybody.